Well, I think that we've got to do a better job as a nation of explaining to the American people what we actually do with our development dollars. And that means uh, taking real success stories uh, and putting them in a package that allows for the American people to understand from cradle to grave how their assistance is being used. Uh, currently in our current structure, we're not allowed to publicize what we're doing in international development. Uh, so there's kind of this mystery about what's really actually happening in development. I think if we had an opportunity to tell the story about Afghanistan, uh, we went there in 2003, didn't know what we were going to really find from a development perspective, uh, and then we found out that 6% of the people in that population were actually receiving health care. 6% of a population of about 25 million people. Here's a country that was in a civil war for 25 years. Uh, everybody who could leave left. The people who were left there had nowhere else to go. Uh, within a five-year period, we were able to, able to provide close to 80 to 90 percent of basic health care for all Afghans. And we didn't do that with Americans. We did that with Afghans. We built capacity within the Afghan medical system or health system to be able to deliver those programs in an effective way. So right now, 95 or 90, 95 percent of the delivery of that system, health system in Afghanistan, is being done by Afghan NGOs. And I think that the American people who are the most giving people, when they see examples like that, that their tax dollars are actually helping from an infant mortality perspective as well as uh, inoculation, that gives them a sense that those dollars are really being used in a proper way. Unfortunately, what we always see is the things that don't work. And I think if the American people had an opportunity to see more things that actually worked and they were getting to the people that they thought should, it could get to, uh, I think would make a huge difference. The second piece is that I think we need to do a better job of educating the American people about what uh, emergency assistance is versus long-term sustainable development. The piece I just explained to you is long-term sustainable development. Uh, and I think that the work that we're doing here uh, over the next three days uh, with the Sid World Congress and the Sid Washington chapter are going to give us an opportunity to highlight that. You know, emergency assistance is when you see what happened, unfortunately, in Haiti, uh, what happened in Indonesia uh, with the earthquake, uh, with the tsunami, excuse me. Those kinds of activities are emergency assistance. We do that better than anyone else in the world. When the U.S. military uh, and our NGOs get together and we decide we're going to address that problem, we do it better than anyone. But that's just one piece of the development paradigm. Emergency assistance is just that. It's emergency assistance. It doesn't move that particular country along the economic continuum, which is what we're trying to do. And there's some great success stories out there in regards to the long-term development piece where countries that we've been working with for many years are now moving along the development continuum. They're moving from low-income countries to middle-income countries, which shows progress. And the more those countries that can rise up and, and, and take care of themselves independently, they pull others in the region along with them, along with them in the region. So I just think there's some great stories out there. Uh, and I think the more that the American people have an opportunity to hear those stories and see those stories up close and personal, I think there'll be more acceptance of the work that we continue to do effectively uh, all over the world. I think there are two things. One is we had world-class leaders here this morning talking about very, very complex problems. But what I was emboldened by is the number of young people that were in the audience. They're our next generation of future development leaders. I'm hoping that they will take what they heard this morning and go back to their NGOs, their private companies where they're designing and implementing uh, programs abroad that they think a little more innovative about how they do things to get us out of the stove piping of this is how we do it, you do it this way. No, you do it that way. No, we need to, in this current budget cycle that we're going through, and I think over the next few years, we've got to find a way to come together and take all of this knowledge that we have been able to, to put together over a 51-year period and start using it much more strategically and less in a stovepipe operation. The president, uh, our president, Arthur, Key, Arthur Keys, who's uh, been one of the, the stalwarts of, of SID and trying to support their mission and the work that they're doing uh, in regards to how do you address the key development issues in complex areas. The firm alone, IRD, is working in some of the most difficult places in the world and doing it quite effectively. Uh, and I think that the Sidwell Congress gives us an opportunity to share those stories and those success stories as well as things that didn't go well. And by the way, there are going to be things that don't go well in development because, by the way, development is extremely hard.